Everyone has had a crush at some point in their lives. You want to be around that person, find yourself thinking about them before you go to sleep. You get butterflies every time you get a message hoping it's them. It's a normal part of being a human. But what happens when a crush turns into an obsession? When you can't eat or sleep because you're deeply depressed that you can't be with them. When you can't complete simple daily tasks because you can't stop thinking about them. When you even start stalking them on social media and in real life just so you can be around them. Enter limerence. A subreddit for people whose lives have been consumed by someone who doesn't reciprocate their feelings and in some cases doesn't even know they exist. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can become a Kofi member or a channel member to gain access to uncut videos and other perks, or you can leave me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. According to the subreddit, a simplified definition of limerence is a state of mind which results from a romantic attraction to another person and typically includes obsessive thoughts and fantasies and a desire to form or maintain a relationship with the object of love and have one's feelings reciprocated. As I said in the intro, these feelings are much more intense than the common feelings someone expresses when they have a crush. There are many similarities, but limerence takes it to the absolute extreme. For example, if you have a crush, you might think about that person a lot, whereas if you have limerence, you will obsessively think about that person 24-7, spend all your time fantasizing and making up scenarios about them in your mind. With a crush, you might low-key hope they see and comment on your Instagram story. With limerence, everything you post on social media is to attract their attention, and if they don't see or react to it, you're going to be depressed for the rest of the week. With a crush, you might be more inclined to show up to a mutual friend's party if you know they're going. With limerence, you might know their exact movements, and you take the chance to conveniently show up somewhere you know they'll be whenever you can. This could include visiting the coffee shop they work at every day, just happening to show up at the event they've been posting about on social media, getting the same train as them on the way back from work just so you can see them, even if that means adding an extra hour onto your journey home. Some people have even moved house to live closer to their limerent object, or LO. There is no limit to the lengths some of these people will go to, and these obsessive feelings can last months, years, or even a lifetime in some cases. The LO can be a friend, friend of a friend, a neighbour, a colleague, an ex, an acquaintance, or it could be someone who doesn't even know you exist. A waiter at a restaurant, someone who visits the same library, someone you've seen from a distance a few times on a night out, or even a celebrity you've never met. People who experience limerence might describe it as an obsession, the feeling of being absolutely infatuated with someone, seeing them as perfect, deeply believing they're your soulmate, and any flaws that they do have are usually downplayed and even romanticised. Some of the users in this subreddit talk about this infatuation like the plot of a movie. They'll write poetry about their LO, torture themselves listening to music that reminds them of their LO. While many objectively know their obsession is unhealthy and that nothing will ever come of it, some seem totally delusional and believe that this random person they've never even spoken to feels the same about them, and one day they'll both realise and live happily ever after. Here's an example of one user describing her LO. To the person who asked why I'm limerent for him. Because he has amazing qualities that I do not, that I admire. Because we vibe and connect effortlessly, and I love the banter and he makes me laugh. Because he's intriguingly my polar opposite. Because we spoke daily for three years. Because we were going through hard times when we met and helped each other. Because I like the way he's quiet and soft-spoken. Because he dances alone in his room. Because he sleeps with a childhood bear. Because his hair is wavy. Because of his blue eyes. Because of his charismatic energy. Because of his slightly cocky attitude because he's always happy and upbeat, because he's sad eating breakfast alone, because of the way he says, oh my days, 
because of the way he says Newt Newt instead of Night Night, because of his interest in science, his logically minded brain, his love of architecture, his love of history, his patriotism to Wales, his British accent, his thirst to be the best, because of his smile, because of his laugh, because of the way he calls me his nickname for me, because of how it felt when he hugged me, because of the feel of his name in my mouth, because of how he shows me places on Google Maps and imagines going there, because he said he'd like to take me out to Denny's at 2am, because of the way he makes my heart race thinking about him, because of the songs he sends me to listen to, because of talking on Discord and taking turns playing songs and saying, hey, I love that song, when we find one we both like, because of how he talked me through an anxiety attack, because of how he diagnoses my headaches, because of how he called me his glass of champagne. This is what I meant when I said that every single tiny detail about an LO is romanticised, and sure, to some extent, this is kind of normal. If you're in a relationship with someone, you're gonna notice and like the little things, but for an LO, it goes to show how much overthinking goes into this, and it seems like many of the users on this sub will torture themselves with these little things that actually aren't that unique to one individual, or the things that just really don't matter in the grand scheme. Before we take a look at some more posts, let's cover some of the theories explaining why people become limerent in the first place. There seems to be a link between limerence and childhood trauma. Many people who experience limerence were abused or neglected, or just didn't receive enough love and validation as children. This neglect in early life seems to manifest into a strong desire to be loved and obsessed over. Limerent people obsess over their LO in hopes that they also feel the same and will one day reciprocate, giving them the love and affection they lacked in childhood. It goes without saying that these people have anxious attachment styles, a significant level of anxiety arises from the thought of losing someone who was never theirs to begin with. Some are suffering with mental illnesses like depression and borderline personality disorder, as I said before, there seems to be an aspect of people torturing themselves over the perceived fact that they'll never be with this person, which could be as a result of depression, etc., and also fuels depression further. Some will engage in other behaviours that are related to anxiety and OCD, for example compulsive behaviour like hoarding and excessively shopping. It all seems to boil down to filling the void, and avoiding the feeling of losing something or running out of it, be that love or material possessions. Taking all this into consideration, I think it's important to try and empathise with limerent people. I'm not saying condone their actions if they go as far as stalking their LO, that's obviously incredibly inappropriate, but it's easy to make a joke out of people like this, or roll your eyes and think it's just a teenager experiencing their first crush. But limerence can be debilitating, it can interfere with someone's ability to live a normal life. It's even driven some to think about taking their own lives, I'm sure others have actually succeeded. Most of these people are either mentally ill or are still deeply suffering due to traumatic things that happened during their childhood, so you can sympathise with them without normalising or condoning actions that might be damaging to others. The impact limerence has on people's lives varies. There is usually significant disruption to one's life, they can't focus on anything but their LO. This can even prevent them from eating properly and sleeping. They might be in a relationship with someone else that ends up deteriorating due to their infatuation with another person. In cases where the limerence has lasted years, this can lead to a cycle of misery, failed relationships and other bad decisions, like what happened to this user, who titled their post, Don't End Up Like Me. 14 year run so far on my latest LO. He's living his life and I'm still spinning on him. My whole life has been one LO after another. Started before I even liked boys. I attached to books and Hollywood stars before I started attaching to my best friend, and then my first real LO. Age 14 it started and it never stopped. I monkey barred from one to another until I settled on two long-term relationships that were both alcoholics. They both failed for reasons due to limerence and alcohol. My marriage was good until I became limerent on a married man in a video game which I didn't even know what he looked like, and that's where it is now. Don't end up like me. 
I'm mid-50s, alone, guilt-ridden, ashamed, depressed, and probably alone for the rest of my days. I can't resolve past relationships, so I can move into a new one. I'm so limerent, I feel sorry for anyone who would get involved with me. All my relationships dissolved because of my mental inability to connect properly. Now I know about limerents for the last eight months, my life has more clarity. I know why I did what I did. I understand I was neglected and abused for key years in my life and limerence was my escape. I understand I have to utilise better ways to cope. I can see my LO differently and now I see how sick I was. I'm going to continue to dedicate myself to getting better. My children have suffered the most. I'm working to recover those wounds and heal them. Don't end up like me. If you know you are limerent, keep working on it. Find a person that you are on the same level. You deserve to have a steady mate. I appreciate this sub for daily affirmations. I will continue to strive for peace. Peace out. Thanks for the rant. This space is holy as far as I'm concerned. It's good to know that this person has started to realise how much limerence has affected their life and that they're slowly recovering, but it's really depressing that it took until they were in their 50s for things to change. They wasted so many years in this cycle, I can only hope they live a healthier and more fulfilling life going forward. Here's another post from someone in the early stages of limerence. I don't know how to say it, but my heart felt heavy, my body is numb, my mind constantly spacing out just thinking about her. Just thinking about I can't get her is really painful for me. My heart felt it being shredded apart, something in there just kept poking and slashing it. It's been a month since I started feeling like this. Every day, every night, I would lay down and just feel the pain. Is it depression? I don't know. I never felt these emotions before. This is the strongest emotion I ever felt and I can't do anything about it. I tried to forget her, blocked her socials, doing chores to keep my mind busy. But like always, her face kept appearing in my brain. I wouldn't block her just to see how she's doing. I eat less now, lost 6 kilograms in this last month, don't have the appetite like I used to. I also talk much less. I'm an introvert, not like I talk much before this shit hit me, but I really don't want to talk with anybody, not even my family. But when I need to, I will still talk, but at a very minimal response and interest. My voice sounded lazy, I can feel it. I don't look or sound interested to have any conversation with anyone, I can feel it. I don't know if they can tell. Not like I always tell my problems to my family and friends. The pain of falling in love with someone you know you can't have is too strong. I just wanted to see her as just another girl, not someone I fall in love with. Limerent people will often go to great lengths to get their LO to notice them. This includes things like posting on social media, but it usually goes much further than that. Some people will literally redesign their entire lives. Here's an example from a comment on a post asking users how their lives changed because of their LO. Moving cities, starting a business like you also say, the choice of my new career, my new hobby, the way I dress, the music I listen to, where I go on holiday and how I spend it, the list goes on. But I don't know my LO so well, so these things are all projections of what I think you would like. So ultimately, they're all about how I think I should be or want to be. That thought helps me a lot because it essentially means that I'm doing these things for myself and not for him. Apparently, I just need to make a little detour in my mind to make those decisions because I don't trust my own judgement enough slash don't take myself seriously slash can't think for myself without Ello commenting on everything I do in my mind. To say it differently, Ello is just my inner critic. So this person doesn't even know her Ello enough to know if the decisions she's making are the things that would make her more appealing to him, yet her career, where she lives, Hobbies, holidays, basically her whole identity is based around things that she thinks he likes and she barely knows him. It's certainly not uncommon for limerence to develop towards people that they barely know, which I think highlights one of the key problems with it. It's not that they're obsessed with who their LO actually is, they're obsessed with this fake version of them they've created based on next to no valid information or interactions. 
So this begs the question, what would happen if it turned out that someone's LO reciprocated their feelings? This has actually happened to a few people on the subreddit, and I'll give you a clue. In most cases, they're probably not going to live happily ever after. It seems to go one of two ways. After the LO confesses their feelings, the limerent person becomes really anxious because they think it's not going to work, especially considering the limerent person has usually moulded their identity to fit what the LO would want, so the LO has never actually seen their true self. Here's an example. My LO confessed to being obsessively in love with me today. I can't believe this. After months of being driven to the edge of madness every single day due to my limerence for this man, he confesses. He is in love with me. It's all he can think of. He has tried to distract himself, but nothing works. He told me today, and it's like the world stopped turning for a while. It's almost comical. I don't know where this is going from now on. I feel like I've never been myself around him since I was just trying to be perfect all the time. So he might have a wrong idea of me in his head. I hope he actually likes me too and hasn't just been in it for the chase. We'll see. In a comment the next day, OP said, I'm already so worried it's going to shit. There's a significant age difference going on between us, so I worry that we're not that good of a match intellectually as I thought we were. The physical attraction is very, very much there though, and it's mutual. Trying my hardest not to self-sabotage this. Anxiety to some extent is to be expected in any case, because fantasy and reality are two totally different things. It's one thing to dream about what it would be like to be with them, to let your mind run wild with the possibilities because it's not real. But when things become real, it no longer exists in your mind. Now there are real consequences and real things that can go wrong. The fantasy is perfect, but the reality is always flawed. This can be because the LO turns out not to be the person you thought they were or wanted them to be, and this is the second way that things usually go wrong. As I said before, limerent people are rarely obsessed with who the LO actually is, but rather this fake version of them that doesn't actually exist, and they can be two totally different realities. Even in cases where the LO isn't that different, the reality of being with them can be. As much as limerence feels depressing, empty, lonely, anxiety-inducing, it can also be exhilarating in some ways. Limerence has been compared to heroin on the subreddit, and while some might say that's a bit of an exaggeration, it is an interesting comparison. Here's a post from someone discussing whether limerence is an addiction. I was wondering, in a very low moment, whether the high highs of limerence are even possible within the context of a healthy life and stable relationships. The night my LO and I finally hooked up, I haven't felt that good in years. Pure bliss. But the day afterwards, when we decided we couldn't keep doing this, I wanted to sink to the bottom of the sea. Nothing, nothing feels as good as the peaks of limerence. But that's often what I've heard people say about heroin too. Humans are not supposed to feel as good as they do on heroin. That's a feeling only possible because of a drug scrambling your receptors. It's the same true for limerence highs. Are these not feelings we're supposed to be having in a healthy, stable life? It feels important to know, because if it's possible to feel this good without the crushing lows and problems, then I'll keep looking. But if these are feelings only possible through sacrifice and disruption, then I'll be more at peace with living a boring life. I wouldn't do heroin no matter how good someone told me it felt, and I want to apply the same rule to limerence if that's what's going on. Following the comparison with heroin, it kinda makes sense that once someone is actually in a relationship with their LO, the high no longer has the same effect. This OP actually hooked up with their LO, but for some, this high can come from a message, a moment of eye contact even. The obsession comes from the excitement that you might get a chance with them, no matter how unlikely. From the little dopamine hit you get from each interaction, it's all about the chase. On a smaller scale, I think a lot of people can relate to that. It's not uncommon for people to be really into someone during the talking stages, then lose interest when things progress because it's perceived as less exciting. 
Heroin addicts will tell you that nothing comes close to the feeling they had the first time they ever got high. They do feel good each time after that, but it's never the same as the first time, and of course when they don't have it, they feel lower than they have ever felt. Similarly, nothing compares to the feeling limerent people get when there's a glimmer of hope that things will progress with their LO. The dopamine hit amongst the sea of despair, and when they actually get them, it just doesn't feel as exciting as it did. The novelty has worn off. Here's a post from someone who feels like this. I'm bored and regretful now that my LO and I are dating. It's a trap, you guys. After 14 years of limerence, I can now call my LO my boyfriend and I'm bored out of my mind. Everything that made my neurons fire rapidly all of these years does absolutely nothing for me now. All I can see are the flaws and the incompatibilities that I was so ready and willing to take on previously. I think I can confidently say my brain is broken, my thoughts are not to be trusted, and my LO is better off staying away from me because the pedestal I put him on is coming crashing down, and I'm so afraid for the damage it's going to cause to his already hurting self-esteem. Rereading my journal from three months ago is so devastating, but also entertaining, because even though I can barely remember how intense every emotion felt, I can clearly read it in my writing. Everything is so clueless, bumbling, just a mush of thoughts driven by uncertainty and assumption. I'm addicted to the high of being obsessed with someone I have convinced myself is out of reach, and that's all this will ever be. I'm addicted to novelty and simultaneously desperate for and terrified of validation. Anytime my LO does anything that I like, my first reaction is to lament over how it's too good or too nice. I don't trust that I truly want to feel pleasure. Perhaps I enjoyed the suffering and misery of it all. The illusion of being the victim in my story where I am never good enough no matter how hard I try. This is clear to me because of how often I find myself fighting off urges to ask about old scenarios to try and clear things up and gain perspective. I don't want to build something new. I want to continue to ruminate and obsess over all of the little questions that are either completely irrelevant or have no answers. My inner child is in the driver's seat and my adult self has no idea how to steal back the wheel. I'll end off with this small passage from my journal that really stuck out to me. Three months after a game night with my friends, I'd written about regretting not giving him a hug when we left. I must demonstrate restraint, because if I don't, I'm certain things will deteriorate quickly. I have to remain grateful for the things I get freely and be patient. I knew exactly where I would end up, and now here I am. We could have built a lovely friendship, but the limerence has such a way of destroying anything with substance or value. The bottom line is, limerence almost always causes inescapable suffering. Either you become infatuated with someone who will never feel the same, and every choice you make is a desperate attempt to gain validation from someone who doesn't even have passing thoughts about you. Or in one of the rare situations where the LO does feel the same, it usually doesn't work out because the obsession is not actually based in reality, and quite often the cycle just ends up repeating with someone else. As we've seen from some of these posts, this can ruin years of people's lives, just like any other addiction, and it can be really hard to put an end to it. The course of action recommended by users on the subreddit is usually to stop contacting the LO, if you ever did in the first place, followed by some combination of therapy, keeping yourself busy with hobbies, and distracting yourself by meeting other people. It's all easier said than done though, and while there are some success stories on the sub, there are significantly more stories of people trying and failing to get over the limerence. Thankfully, I don't think there are any extreme horror stories from the sub itself. At least no, if I can't have you, no one can murders or anything like that. But when limerence gets taken to an extreme level, that's certainly not beyond the realm of possibility. There have been many cases of people becoming obsessed with someone before murdering them or attempting to. One well-known example is Ricardo Lopez, who became infatuated with the Icelandic singer Björk. According to Wikipedia, He began gathering information about her life, followed her career, and wrote her numerous fan letters. 
Initially, Lopez cited her as his muse and said that his infatuation gave him a euphoric feeling. As time passed, his fixation became all-consuming and he grew more disconnected from reality. In his diary, Lopez wrote of longing to be accepted by Bjork and to be a person who had an effect on her life. He fantasised about inventing a time travel to travel to the 1970s and befriending her as a child. In 1996, Lopez was living alone in an apartment in Hollywood, Florida. Around this time, he read in Entertainment Weekly that Bjork was in a romantic relationship with the English musician Goldie. Lopez was angered by this perceived betrayal and the fact that she was involved with a black man, writing in his diary, I wasted eight months and she has a fucking lover. He began fantasizing about how he could punish Bjork. Lopez stopped writing his diary and began filming a video diary in his apartment. According to Lopez, the diary's purpose was to document my life, my art, and my plan. Comfort is what I seek in speaking to you. I'm being my own psychologist. You are a camera. I am Ricardo. He recorded 11 videotapes containing approximately two hours of footage each. The tapes contain footage of Lopez preparing his revenge and discussing his crush that ended up as an obsession. Lopez's anger over Bjork's relationship with Goldie intensified and he decided to kill her. In one entry, he said, I'm just going to have to kill her. I'm going to send a package. I'm going to be sending her to hell. Lopez initially intended to construct a bomb filled with hypodermic needles containing HIV-tainted blood, which satisfied his desire to have a lasting effect on Bjork's life. When he realised it would not be feasible to build such a device, Lopez began constructing a letter bomb using sulfuric acid in a hollowed-out book which he planned to have sent to Bjork's home in London, England. The device was designed to explode and kill or disfigure Bjork as she opened the book. He would commit suicide after mailing the bomb, hoping that he and Bjork would be united in heaven. On the morning of September the 12th, 1966, Lopez began filming his final video diary entry. The final tape, titled Last Day, Ricardo Lopez, begins with Lopez preparing to go to the post office to mail the letter bomb. He said that he was very, very anxious, but that he would kill himself rather than be arrested if he aroused suspicion. After returning from the post office, he resumed filming. As Bjork's music plays in the background, a naked Lopez shaves his head and eyebrows and paints his face red and green. He examines himself in a mirror and tells the camera that he is a little nervous now. He then states, I'm definitely not drunk. I am not depressed. I know exactly what I am doing. The gun is cocked back. It's ready to roll. As Bjork's song, I Remember You, finishes playing, Lopez shouts, this is for you, and shoots himself in the mouth with a revolver. Thankfully, the package never got delivered to Bjork. When police found Ricardo's body, they contacted Scotland Yard to warn them about it, but the Metropolitan Police had already incepted it from a post office in London and it had been safely detonated. Bjork was understandably shaken by the incident, describing it as terrible and very sad. She couldn't sleep for a week and stated that people shouldn't take her too literally or get involved in her personal life. She also sent a card and flowers to Ricardo's family. Ricardo didn't outright describe his feelings as limerence, but that seems to be exactly what they were. He didn't know Bjork, and yet he was totally obsessed with her. He had this fake version of her in his mind that was based solely on her public persona, and when this idealised version of her suddenly changed, as in she got a boyfriend, this angered him to the point where he planned to kill her. As far as I know, no one on the Limerence subreddit has taken it this far, but plenty of users admit to stalking their LO or gaining information that will allow them to stalk. For example, Can Limerence manifest itself in a way very similar to stalking? I feel what I do borders on it. I listen in on my LO's every conversation to try and get every drop of info and knowledge I can that may be of use to me. For example, she works at the bar I frequent. 
I figured out via listening in and digging what days she works, what shifts she works, whether it be day or night shift, and what time each shift starts. Day shift being from opening at 12pm to 5pm, night shift being from 5pm to closing time at 11.30pm, and I've even memorised the registration plate of the car she drives. I'm not even sure how that could help me at all, other than knowing she's nearby if I ever see her car. She herself has already happened to mention in conversation with me once that she has a boyfriend. She gave no details as to who it may be though. However, via me digging and being in the bar a lot, I can say with a good 80% certainty I've figured out who it is. If that post wasn't worrying enough already, this guy's comments are even more so. He's convinced that although his LO has a boyfriend, she must be interested in him because they've had conversations and she smiled at him. He said doing what he's doing works. He knows because his dad dated a girl years ago who had a male friend and when his dad and this girl broke up, she started dating her friend and they stayed together until she died. Quote, That's literally exactly what I'm doing. This man waited years for his plan to work and it did. I have no evidence my LO and her boyfriend are going to break up, but neither did that man who got with my dad's ex after four years, but because he was there, he pulled it off. Thankfully, there were a few people in the comments trying to reason with this guy and point out that he sounds crazy, and that stalking someone in real life is taking it too far, but he wasn't having any of it. Others in the comments related to the post and admitted that they actually followed their LOs in person, and there are various other similar posts like that on the subreddit. Some of the most interesting posts I found on the subreddit were from people who were limerent themselves, then experienced becoming someone else's LO, which was a wake-up call for them. Here's one example. Never realised how creepy my limerence made me before someone else got limerent with me. I was for a long time super limerent with a librarian and used to go to the library every day to read books. He definitely noticed that I often stared at him and made excuses to talk with him a couple of times. I've never realised how creepy I was until recently. There's a man who always stares and smiles to me at the university, tries to sit near me. This creeped me out to be honest. I just take my things and disappear when I see him. It's super uncomfortable to see someone I'm not into act like this. Paul Librarian, he had no option to disappear as I stalked him in his workplace. I tried to not make it obvious, but I think it was. I'm glad the limerence is over. I struggled for over a year and cried almost every day because of a stranger. Honestly, I sometimes get scared of myself. The whole limerence thing is super creepy, but I can't stop doing it. Now I've found a new LO victim, but I know now how creepy it is to show up at his workplace. I just have enough with the fantasy. I'm so embarrassed that my loneliness made me act this way. Here's another example. I'm usually the one limerent over people, which is why I joined this subreddit, but I kind of had a wake-up call recently spending time with someone who I realised was limerent over me. I always thought my tendency to romanticise and idealise my LOs was romantic, if doomed. The feelings worthy of poetry and music. That was misguided, I realise now. It's an uncomfortable feeling, being put on a pedestal, being seen as this fantasy manic pixie dream person. It feels almost fetishising. My personhood rendered invisible. We initially bonded over our shared music tastes, and I think we had a natural bond, being similarly sad people who related to Mitski a little too much. But it was too quick, too intense, how he felt for me soon after. We met when we were both travelling for a brief two days, and before we parted ways, he admitted he wanted to keep seeing me. I gently let him down, told him I wasn't looking for a relationship, but he basically disregarded what I said and booked a flight to my city a couple of weeks later, saying he needed to see me again to see where it would lead. I was uncomfortable with the idea and hinted as much, but it didn't go through, I guess. He just saw me as a projection of his fantasies and was blind to what I myself wanted. I used to think limerence was the ultimate flattery, to be adored and loved, but I realise it's actually selfish. 
We expect our LOs to save us from ourselves, not recognising their own personhood outside our rose-tinted view. When we met again, it felt unnerving how he would stare at me, like I was something he wanted to consume, because it wasn't even me he saw, but a projection of his fantasies, an escape from his own problems. It was strange, I understood him and where his feelings were coming from, having been there before, but felt this gaping incongruity, I suppose, in how he saw me and who I really was. I've always wondered why the people who I had intense feelings for never seemed to be really interested in me, whereas the people I casually dated and wasn't limerent over seemed to be more interested in pursuing a relationship. I realise now I probably made my LOs uncomfortable. People want to be seen as people, for who they are, flaws and all, and not as some idealised projection for someone else's problems. I find these posts fascinating because limerent people usually have no idea how the LO would feel if they knew about their obsession. Obviously, limerent people aren't freely choosing to be limerent, most of them don't actively want their LO to feel uncomfortable, and in many cases, the LO isn't even aware of the situation. But maybe for some, becoming an LO to someone else could help them overcome their own limerence, because it allows them to see it from a different perspective. In general, the limerence subreddit is quite engrossing because most people can probably begin to relate to it in a much less extreme way. Most users on the sub are harmless individuals seeking support, validation and a sense of community as they navigate through their intense emotions and attempt to move past their obsessions. Of course, the darker parts of the community are those who lack restraint and engage in harmful and problematic behaviours, and the subreddit provides a concerning yet interesting dive into the minds of those people. It's almost like an episode of You at times, and can be quite terrifying. For all you know, you could be someone's LO. Perhaps there's someone out there who's totally infatuated with you, who knows where you are and what you're doing every minute of every day who follows you around and knows everything you like and dislike, curating their personality and appearance to be your perfect match while you don't even know they exist. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments, plus any other disturbing or controversial subreddits you'd like me to cover in a future episode. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, Huge thank you to my Kofi members and channel members whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.